for one, greatness is being sown into you through the word. Y'all get great teaching here. That's a great seed. That's a that's great material to start with. Then y'all get taught and trained through greatness. You get you have great examples before you. You have all the great, and then most importantly, you have the spirit of the great one available to you to live inside of you. So Father, we just thank you for this day, dear Lord. We just thank you for another opportunity, Lord, that you have gathered us here together in corporate worship, dear Lord. We thank you right now just for this moment, Lord. We thank you that we are your oracles, hallelujah, that have been sent on assignment, Lord, to bring this word to heal, deliver the captives, those who may be in bondage. Father, I thank you right now, dear Lord, that you are going to speak through both of us this morning, dear Lord. And I thank you that the words that we are sharing, Father, hallelujah, will hit the intended target as you have called it to, Father. We thank you right now for, for how you will empower, how you will encourage, how we strengthen your people today, your sons, your daughters. Lord, we thank you for this feast. We thank you for what we are going to consume today, dear Lord. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts spiritually so that we receive everything you are depositing to us today. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, I'm going to start like this. So, whether you are a believer or a non-believer, there will be times in your life where you feel discouraged. There's going to be times in your life where you feel burnt out, you'll be frustrated, like you don't have anything left to give. You may feel at times like you are running on vapors or fumes. And all too often when we reach that time or that point of feeling drained, we struggle to find our way back to that level of motivation, that level of drive to get us moving in the right direction at a healthy pace. Instead, we kind of just drag ourselves along through life. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. Have you ever felt like you've just Amen. been going through the motions, you've just been dragging yourself, you just been, you know, sometimes you just wake up and you be like, And as hard as it is when we find ourselves in that development, that development naturally, imagine how dangerous it can be when you are living a life for God and walking in faith on fumes. Imagine walking in faith on fumes. I know it sounds, it don't even sound right, but believers experience burnout too. Mm -hmm. I know that 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 that, 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 that that's tough. That's a bitter pill. Swallow, right? But we're supposed to trust God and Hallelujah, and He's in more than I, I can do all things through Christ. All that, all that church talk, right? But the reality is, sometimes you be like, we, you 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 don't say it, you don't say it, but you feel it. You, I mean, you be, and, and, and guess what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a hundred with you, but that's a part of where we going. Sometimes you need to say it to God. God ain't got it. God, I ain't got it. Because the reality is, he knows, even in those moments, where you are. Where you are. I'm going to jump the gun. Let's think about Jesus in Gethsemane. Okay? I know it sounds odd because as believers, we're supposed to have this super faith that just doesn't buckle. But we experience this burnout because we have a humanity. We have a humanity. We have a humanity that we must manage. And if we're not careful, the leverage or the attention that we lend to our humanity or our flesh can eventually starve our spirit man and leave us spiritually defeated. Right? Think about it like this. When a cell phone battery is depleted, you don't try to charge it with gasoline. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear me? Right. Mm -hmm. If your cell phone is depleted, you don't go to Sunoco 
to fix that issue, right? Right. When a gasoline-powered car is empty, you can't fuel it with electricity. I said it's gasoline That's right. power car because I know y'all Tesla drivers want to be yeah, my, 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 want to be in mm -hmm. my comments, my car. <laughs> Pause. Um, and it's the same thing. Even a human body, even a human body requires a different fuel to function than yes. a light bulb. Yes. So likewise, being spiritually depleted requires a different type of refilling. Okay. Mm -hmm. And our objective today is to help those who deal with being spiritually on empty by reminding them that before we become drained, you must go back to the tap. You must go back to the tap. And when I say the tap, I mean the anointing place. Mm -hmm. You must go back to the anointing place. Now, we are going to get a little technical today. Are. Yes, indeed, we're going to get a little technical today. So if you're taking notes, I highly recommend that you do that. I'm going to try to go slow as possible. Unless I get excited, then yeah, you're on your own. <laughs> you're on your own. But, uh, then I encourage you to make sure you go back, look at the stream again. And if you go back and look at the stream, I also encourage you, if there's something that's not clear, something that you don't understand, make the comment in the comments. And we will get back to you. We get notified when people comment and we will answer your questions as best as we know how. So anyway, got to get back to the tap. Remember when you first gave yourself to God. Remember when you had that moment. And maybe some of you haven't had that moment yet, and that's okay. But for those of you who have had that moment when you first gave yourself to God, do you remember how that felt? Yeah. Do you remember how that felt? Yes, the is. joy, yes. the peace, the freedom, yeah. that weight that you finally felt you were coming up from under, the sense of purpose in your life, the power, the fire, and the zeal. Do you remember how that felt? But then slowly, but surely, the pressures of life, the pressures of life, right? I didn't say, life be life, and yes, life be life. I didn't say he was out there continuing to sin. I didn't say he was out there being disobedient. I didn't say he was, you know, being double-minded, unstable. And all. I just said the pressures of life. Yeah, you still got to go to job and deal with people. You still got to deal with the economy rising and your paycheck staying the same. You still got to manage your household. You still got to go to the grocery store and pay way too much money for chicken wings. I'm talking to myself now. I'm preaching to myself. I didn't have nothing to do with the price of chicken wings going up. I'm just mad that my appetite, my appetite still desires those things. But as life be life and as gas prices go higher, you have pandemics, you have racial tension, you have crazy things in politics, you have people talking about wars overseas. Just life. You didn't lie. You didn't cuss. You didn't steal. You didn't bring none of that on yourself, but it can be draining. No? Yeah. It can be draining. It can be draining. And those things that happen gradually pull our spirits down over time due to overexposure. Remember, in humans, your spirit is composed of a wide range of functions, including your thinking, your understanding, your emotions, your attitudes, intentions, and more. And if we are not intentionally mindful, life can and will suck the life out of your spirit. Did I hear did I say that? Yeah. Life will suck the life out of Acts chapter 3, verse 19. This is a glare on my screen. Acts 3, verse 19. And this is the amplifier. It reads, so repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins, and return to God. Seek his purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away, blotted out completely, so that, this is the part, times of refreshing, times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day. Now, in this chapter, God has previously used Peter 
and John to heal the lame man at the gate called Beautiful. Some of you may be familiar with the story. The story is kind of like this. There was a man who was lame from birth, and every day his friends, his family, whoever, would sit him outside the church. That's crazy, boy. They would sit him outside the church while they would go inside to worship God. They would sit him outside the church, and he would beg for money. So when Peter and John approached him, he's like, hey, begging alms, you know, can I get a couple of dollars? You guys can change. And this is when they hear silver and gold have I not, but what I have to get arise and walk and they pick him up. And he gets up leaping and jumping and they and then he goes into church with Peter and John. And as everybody is watching this man that they have watched for his whole life, that they have walked past, hmm, whew, that they have walked past on their way to church. I could go a different way. That they have walked past on their way to be religious and overlooked this person in need. Now they see this man in their sanctuary. He'll set free and deliver. And it is at this moment that Peter begins to tell them. And Peter is encouraging these people because they have a mindset that is contrary to that of God. Because had they had the mindset that was consistent with God, the one that they were quote unquote serving and being ritualistically religious to her, they would have not bypassed this man all his life. But I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not going to get all into that. Peter encourages the people to repent so that times of refreshing can come from being in the presence of the Lord. So for us, we must understand that there is a connection or a correlation between our spiritual refreshing and the presence of the Lord. We have to understand that the presence of the Lord is the fuel that charges our spiritual battery. And to be restored, we must get back to the tap. We must get back to the anointing place. So, I'm going to keep going. The tap as stated before is the anointing place. So, first I want to start with explaining what it means for a person or a thing to be anointed. For a person or a thing to be anointed, because I think we just throw that word around and we don't really understand what that means. Genesis chapter 28 verse 16 to 12. And the context of this verse is that Jacob has just awakened from the dream about the angels ascending and descending into heaven, the Jacob's ladder dream. He has a vision. So he wakes up from that dream and then verse 16 reads, and Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. Hmm. And he was afraid, and he was afraid, and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And here we go. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillow, and he set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of the stone. He anoints the stone. I want y'all to get it because a lot of times we'd be like, I'm anointed. I want you to know a thing, a stone, a chair can be anointed. We'll get that, we'll get some more of that. But he anoints the stone. And then on top of that, verse 19, he says, And he called the name of the place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, I will give. I will give me bread to eat and remnant to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Now, so I want y'all to also understand that this is all Jacob's fault that y'all have these tithing conversations. Because this was something he committed to. I'm not getting into that lesson, but I did want to point that out when I was studying. I was like, oh boy. But anyway, but I want you to understand that with this anointing, Jacob makes a vow. He makes a covenant with God. A covenant that comes along with being anointed. So the text tells us Jacob poured oil on the stones, he anointed them. And what was the significance of anointing the stones? Here comes the technical part. The ancient practice of anointing is deeply rooted in the culture of the Old Testament. Anointing had its own distinctive place in the ancient world of the Bible. The Hebrew word translated anoint is masa. 
the word masa is used 69 times in the Old Testament and means to apply oil by pouring or spreading. Watch this. The practice is linked ritually with the worship of Israel at the tabernacle where the priest and the altar were anointed with a specially prepared sacred oil. The act of anointing had several functions. First, it consecrated religious items and served to ordain religious leaders. In each case, the ideal is that the setting aside or authorization of God's service, therefore, something that is anointed is something that has been consecrated for ministry. Something that is anointed is something that has been set aside for ministry. So when God anoints us, he is setting us aside. He's separating us. He's sanctifying us for his purposes. So when you say I'm anointed, you better understand that you're set aside for something greater than sitting on the block, shucking and jiving. For the, you're set aside for more than just going into church and talking about people. You're set aside for more than just being around church folk and condemning them. You're set aside to do a work for the Lord. Okay? I'm, 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 I'm just going, I'm, I'm going to leave that right there. 1 Samuel 16, 13. Mrs. King James. 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah, right? So here we see that sometimes the anointing not only sets you apart, but it empowers you to do what you're anointed and consecrated to do. So when God sets us apart, when God sanctifies us, understand that God is infinite. He's at the edge of the universe in eternity. He would not consecrate you and choose you and set you aside if he did not intend to empower you and equip you to accomplish that which he was purposing you to fulfill. Y'all got it? Yes. We're just talking about anointing because I want you to understand that there is a place of anointing that we have to return to when we're feeling depressed and powerless. There's a place of empowerment that we need to get back to. And Prophetess Janelle is going to talk to us about that place at this time. So when you look at um, verses 16 and 17 in, in Genesis 28, you find um, Jacob talking about a place. And verse 16 says, And Jacob awake, awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I hear it not. Verse 17, And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The word afraid is not the traditional meaning. So it's not a feeling of, so by, by that I mean it's not the feeling of fear. It's not filled with uh, apprehension. That's not what's being described here. The fear that Jacob um, had is reverential awe. So when Jacob said, how dreadful is this place? He wasn't saying it in a negative way. He was saying this place was inspiring awe or reverence. So I don't know about you, but that you know that kind of sounds like a good place. I want to be in a place that inspires awe, that inspires reverence. So that's what Jacob was saying when he was talking about that place. And why would you want to leave that place? Why would you? Because because we're talking about and you know not even to like not getting ahead. Why would you want to be that place that inspires you, that encourages you, that fills you? Amen. Amen. So as um, Pastor was um, to me, Apostle was just saying before, this is not just a physical place, but it can also be mental as well. Okay. Now, have you ever heard? Because I know I've said this, so you probably may have heard this. Um, the saying. I don't have the mental space to think about or deal with X at this time. You, you said a thank you for the one person who, who, who agreed. <laughs> but no, but so, so that right there is a red flag that it's time to come back to the tap. When you say, I don't have the mental space for this. I don't have, 
because where in, 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 in talking about the, the mental space, it's where was your mind at? You, you mentioned this in the beginning. Where was your mind at when God smeared you, when, he, when you were first marked for his, his service? That is the place where he set aside um, for you to serve, and you have to get back to that to that place. I know, um, when was it, I, a couple of months ago, I talked about the, you know, one of my favorite songs by that Pastor Georgia. Well, it's not her song, but the song that she sings whenever the fellowship gets together, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to that place. And sometimes you do have to, to, to go to that, to that, to that thinking. You that mind frame, like, okay, you know what, to that, when you had that, that zeal, that passion, like, all right, yes, I'm on fire for God. Even, um, there's a song by Antioch Worship uh, College called First Love. It's some of the lines from the first verse. Take me back to my first love, where all I want is you. Jesus, you are more than enough. All I need is you. Again, where was your mind when you were set aside to serve so that's you know that's that's the, the the mental space you have to you have to keep your mind focused when, when you want to did you already talk about this tapping out no nope. okay well when when you when you say i don't have the mental space for that or when when your mind is just can't can't handle anymore that's when you say okay you know what i need to get back to that place to that place of awe, that place of inspiration, that place that will fill me up. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, like you, you mentioned, you started to mention tapping out. You know, don't tap out. Like, don't run away from the mental place, tap in. Okay. You know, you got to always, always remember that you have access to the source. You have access to the source. The moment you decided to give your life to God and make him your Lord and Savior, have Father, have Abba be your Father, you had access as a son. My mom has been staying with us for um, the last couple of weeks and she asked me about Nazir. And I was like, oh, Nazir is home. He is home. He, he, I said, he comes and goes as he please. And I'm not talking about leaving. I'm talking about upstairs, downstairs, bathroom, TV. We'll be sitting in the living room. He'll come and turn on the TV. It's time for wrestling. I don't know what y'all talking about in my house. Like, like, but, 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 and 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 he understands. He's comfortable. Why? Because he's home. He understands. He's he's family. He he, he understands that you know this is his. Watch this. His place. This is his place. He don't just you know this is home. He go in the refrigerator. Anything in there he want to eat. He take now. My mom got special dietary um, um, concerns right now, so he's like, "Is this the soda I can't have?" Correct. You cannot have that. Don't drink that. But it, but 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 he knows anything that the father and his mother have. He has access to. It's important that you understand that as your identity with the father is concerned, because anything that the father has, you have access to. You have not because you what. Oh, this is a good class. You have not because you ask not. But if, if you need it, God will give it to you. But a lot of times what we try to do is be like, like when I was a kid growing up, I'm going to go just tell myself, snitch on myself. I used to just take it, not ask. My stepdad used to love drinking Pepsi. And he ain't like to serve Pepsi. So, but rather than ask if I could have some, just wait until you run around. Wait, nobody noticed if I took a little swing out of there and then just you know, put some water back up. Yeah, I did the water back up in the bottle. <laughs> I did all of that. I, I listen. I never thought I was perfect. I'm just saying, amen. But yeah, but 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 if I had asked for it, he probably would have gave it to me. He probably would have gave it to me. But I didn't ask, and that's a lot. And that's the problem. A lot of times we try to accomplish things in life without asking the Father for help. And when we go about doing it our way outside of our anointing watch this and outside of our purpose we get drained Amen. we get drained and when you are set apart so when you are set apart when you're anointed right you are identified with a purpose right but we also understand that you are identified with a place there is a location there is a, and the place doesn't necessarily have to be physical there may be a state of mind that God has given you to impart upon others there may be we have a fitness we have a fitness um, ministry here at House of Triumph where's that at where's the fitness place located at 
It's, it's in your mind. It's, we, yeah, exactly. We, 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 we minister to each other and encourage each other and inspire each other and hold each other in, accountable. What does that do? That keeps us in a place of physical accountability. So there is a place associated with being set apart. There's a place. And here's the key. When you are absent from that place, you are, watch this, y'all get this, y'all pay attention to this. When you are absent, right, from that place, you are separated from what you're separated for. Oh, <laughs> you are taken away from the thing that God, se God separated you from the world so that you could do this specific work. But when you move away from that place, now you're separating yourself from the specific work that you were separated from the world to work. <sighs> I know. I said, y'all go back and listen to that a couple of times, and then it'll, it's going to hit you. Because, and, and when you're separated from work, when you, you ever go on vacation from a job? You ever go on a long vacation from a job, like longer than a week? Boy, you get used to not being off, don't you? <laughs> you get used to, I mean, you get used to being off. You get used to not being at work. You really don't want to go back. But that's what happens when you get separated from what you're separated for. You get comfortable not studying. You get comfortable not seeking God's face. But here's the thing, and in that moment, that's when your spiritual battery starts to get drained because you've been away from the tap for too long. You gotta get back to the tap. Watch this, watch this, you gotta get back to the tap. I'm gonna give y'all a natural example. Um, a car battery, right? A car battery can store energy, right? That's what it does. And that energy can be accessed from the battery even if the battery is not in the car. You can have a car battery on the ground, you can put some cables on it, you can make a light light up. You can, you can do things with that battery. However, over time, the battery will die. The battery will die because it was not designed, it was not purposed, it was not set apart to work outside of the car. It was designed to work with the car and with the electrical system of the vehicle. The battery had a per the battery has a purpose and it has a place. It has a purpose and it has a place that is designed to function in. The function of a car battery is not to do what a lot of people think is to do. The purpose of a car battery is to start the car. The purpose of a car, you take that battery out the car, that one thing out the car, it won't start. That is the function of a car battery. It is to start the car. Now watch this. Um, and, and the other small function of a car battery is it maintains little functions that require very little power when the car is not running, your car alone. The clock. It keeps those things running in the back. That's why when your battery dies, your clock always has to be reset. It, th that's what the car battery does. But the alternator provides 95% of the electrical power required when a car is running, including keeping the battery fully charged. <laughs> Look at so 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 the battery is placed inside of a system that. The system needs to get going, but once it gets going, the battery benefits from the system. Did y'all did y'all hear that? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the, the, with, without the battery in a right. car, nothing works. Right, right. But once the battery gets it running, everything in the car functions, including to watch this, refilling and refreshing the battery as well. That's why if your battery ever dies in the car and you get it started, sometimes <laughs> they say leave your car running for an hour because then the battery will get its charge again, it'll get refilled, it has been reconnected to the tap, y'all be all right, y'all be all right. So, practicing, what does that all mean? Practicing your purpose and power in the wrong place or with the wrong people will cause you to perish. Practicing your power or your purpose in the wrong place will cause you to perish. I, 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 again, listen, listen, listen. I only can tell my story because that's the only story I know. I, God has graced me. God has blessed me with a lot of gifts. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not shy. I'm not bashful about it because I'm, I'm saying it because I'm in a place of purpose that I was designed to use those gifts. But I wasn't always like that. And when I was in the world using those gifts, when I, when I, when I took what I was anointed to do, what I was separated to do, when I took my gift and was doing unholy hip-hop, it never worked. It never worked. When I was in the world 
and I was leading people in an ungodly way, it never worked. Even though I had a gift, I was not connected to my power and my source. It never worked. Matter of fact, and y'all know I have said this to you enough times, I'm going to say it again. You, try, you can't do and get away with what everyone in the world does and get away with because you're anointed. Everyone else can do it. They can get away with it. Nothing bad happens. You try it. You even sniff at it for long enough and it blows up in your face. Why? Because you're set aside for something else. And when you try it, you and, I, and listen, I could go on and on. You can be smarter than them. You can be brighter than them. You can be faster than them. You can be stronger than them. But because you're out of position, yes. it won't work. We have to maintain connectivity with the Father. If you don't maintain connectivity with the Father, all of your good efforts, you will still find yourself depleted, drained, and left. Wanting. Oh, Second Chronicles. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. Second Chronicles says says, and this is I I, I put it on her slide because it's it's one of her favorite scriptures, or not anymore. She doesn't she doesn't it up. Okay. So Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and um, it reads, "If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray." and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then, and I always love that part, look at all the stuff we are supposed to do before we get to then. And the problem is we want to get to then without humbling ourselves. We just want to circumvent the prayer and get to then. We want to circumvent seeking his face and get to then. And we sure enough ain't trying to turn from our wicked ways. We want to be like, God knows my heart. We want to see that nonsense. Slap sometimes. We want to say God knows about it. But we, we, we want to do all of those things that God gives us the blueprint for. You want your land healed? You want to hear from heaven? You want your sins forgiven? You got to do that part first. But those are some of the keys that we need to implement so that these are the ways you get back to the tap. So, Prophet Janelle, you're going to go through how we get back to the tap. Yeah, so the ways that we. Um Get back to the tap. There's multiple ways, but I'm going to cover four of them uh, this morning. So the first one is seek Him in prayer. And I'm just going to give you these and then I'm going to uh, break them all down. So seek Him in prayer. Another one, seek Him in worship. Seek Him in His word. And seek Him in service. So seek Him in in prayer Psalm 34 verse 4 Psalm 34 verse 4 and I'm reading this in the English Standard Version I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears so what was the fear not the awe because remember when I said fear before we talked about how it was awe or reverence but this particular fear right here is that thing that pulled you away from the anointing place so what was that fear that pulled you away from the tap god is the one that can and will bring you back but you but you have to be honest and you have to be sincere and see you know and, and, and a lot of times people use the um well god knows everything god knows all yeah but he still wants you to to speak it. He still wants you to say it out of your mouth. Lord, yeah, I fluffed it up. This is the reason why I allowed all of these things to get in the way and because they got in the way, push me back further from you. I, I just want to interject <coughs> I just want to interject something there. Um, you know, and, and sometimes some of us like Ruby and me, mostly me, not Ruby, but Ruby's kind of like me. Sometimes we, we think so hard that we overthink and we just think God and push God right out of the equation. We get to the point where like, well, if God knows everything, and then we use that as a justification to go ahead and do what we already want to do. God does know everything. God sees it from eternity at the end. He already knows the decision that you're going to make. But the, the, the crazy part about it is, like, pause, breathe. For those of you who are parents, 
You know when your child will cut up, don't you? <laughs> don't you? But you hope that they do the right thing. You hope that they don't misbehave. But you know, you know your children. God knows His children. Like I don't understand. Like if, if 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 we could just get to the understanding that the same way we are with our children, God is with us, including the bad side, including like. I knew you was going to run across that street when I told you not to run in the street. I saw you looking. I saw you plotting. That's why I said, don't run in the street. But I saw you looking. I saw you waiting. And you did it anyway. Because I know you. You're my child. I, I, you got my DNA. I, I ran in the street too. I knew, I, I knew how I was. But when, 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 we, when, we, when, we, when we start to say, what, like you were saying, when we start to think so horrible, and this is where theologically we get messy. We'd be like, well, because you know too much. Well, God knows everything. You think you sound smart because, oh, yeah, I know so much about God. So because God knows this, that I'm going to do it, I'm just going to do it anyway. You buffoon. That's what I said. You buffoon because there's also, a, there's also a cost that is associated with that. And what you're doing is you're blaming God for allowing you to do it. That's that, that, that's bananas. And so I just I just wanted to touch on that uh, as, as we move forward because yeah. and, and prayer, prayer is how you reconnect and you get beyond those mentalities. I love the Garden of Gethsemane as the example. Matter of fact, I love Jesus' example every time because Jesus is, I'm buzz, Jesus is God. Yeah. But if Jesus had a moment where it shows us he had to go and pray because of something that he was feeling. It was done for a reason, it was captured for a reason to show us if God understands, he needs to connect with the Father. I said that. Right. If right. God understood that he needed to connect with the Father in a time that was difficult for him, even though he knew what the end would be, even though he was all powerful, he was all knowing, he was all present, if he still needed to pray with the intensity of sweating blood, how much more should we embrace that moment? And what it did is it gave him the comfort to continue to Calvary. Because in the midst of him praying, he had a nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. It brought him back to the tap. It brought him back to the anointing place, the place that he was sent for, the, the place, the job, the assignment that he was sent to accomplish in the first place. Go ahead. All right. So um, the next one that we have, seek him in worship. And that is Psalm 51, verse 15. And I'm reading this in the Passion Translation. Psalm 51, verse 15. Lord God, unlock my heart, unlock my lips, and I will overcome with a joyous praise. Worship must flow from the heart. And as it flows from the heart, it bubbles up out of our mouth in praise and adoration. And that's even kind of like almost like what took place this morning during during prayer. It was just it was just like you couldn't get past anything else. Have you have you ever seen someone? And I know I do it. So whether they're they're worshiping or, or whatever they're doing, they just kind of just have their hand over their heart and just because it's it's a way that they feel like if they don't, their heart is just going to explode. And, and, and it's not it's not it, it's not like a, a bad thing, but it's just one of those things like oh okay. I'm gonna go ahead and worship. Okay, <laughs> of That's course. I'm gonna go ahead and worship. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not saying that you oh, don't no, no, worship. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna interrupt the whole service. Yeah, but it's just like one of those things. Like sometimes you just like you don't know what to say. You don't. But so you just put your hand over your heart and just like it, to. For I'll say for me, it's like God understands that. But we have to seek Him in worship, and as we unlock our heart, I love how it says it in the Passion Translation. Unlock my heart, then unlock my lips. So as my heart gets unlocked, the, the, the adoration and the worship that I have in my heart, it will flow out of my unlocked lips and I'll be able to praise and, and worship and thank you. So that is one way. Another way 
and this is on Second Kings, chapter three, verse fifteen. And I'm reading this in the uh, Good News translation. <laughs> now get me a musician. As the musician played his harp, the power of the Lord came on Elisha. So this is um, the, the prophet Elisha, and, and a lot of times, um, you know, some people say that, oh, well, you don't need music. To, to hear from the Lord, to, to pray or anything. This right here is a supporting scripture that when um, Elisha called upon the musician and the anointed musician played according to um, under the, the under the power of the Lord, that's when the power of the Lord came on Elisha and he was able to, to speak the word to the king. But the reason why I say this scripture right here is Turn on that worship music. Turn on that anointed worship music. That music that allows you to do the hand over the heart, right? Amen. Seek Him in worship. Did you have something you want to explain yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, but yes, I, I guess so, <laughs> since you gave me the opportunity. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Like, 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 I, don't, I don't know about anybody else, but and there's so many ways you could go with this thing. It's just, so, I remember when I, when I was growing up, and like Saturday morning, we would have to clean the house. And my mom would be playing Shirley Season, or the wine, and I, yeah, that, that, I know that's, that's old school, I'm, I'm using it for a reason. But it was very hard to be angry, to be mad, to, to fuss at my parents when you got them talking about Jesus and God in the background. It just was like, like it just, it, it, it just ain't, it, it just don't work that way. and and, and now my mom is staying with me so like we were working out in the gym and our gym is right underneath the room she's staying in and we like to work out the music but i put a different playlist on because i said i wanted some music but i put a different playlist on and so when i finished working out i went upstairs and my sister was sitting with my mom and said i want to turn the music down so my sister's like no that's all right it's cool and you know, so then my mom was like a couple days ago i needed to stay with y'all for my healing because i needed to be in a holy place so y'all be out holy <laughs> I hope you're not. If she's watching, sorry, mom. <laughs> but, but 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 the reality is, like when you're going, like she's going through a, a, a battle, like she had a kidney transplant, all types of medical stuff, body adjusted, but she realizes that. But the music, the worship that's constantly going on in our house, it helps to keep her mind focused on God instead of her blood pressure, instead of her blood sugar, instead of these different pills she got to take, instead of feeling nauseous, instead of feeling, worrying about the food she can't hold up. She has something that's constantly keeping her at the anointing place. Something that's constantly keeping her connected to God. And so then she focuses on Jehovah Rapha, her healer. You understand what I'm saying? Because she has something combating all that negativity. So y'all got, listen, y'all got, got to get, get away from some of that music. Get away from some of that root music. I mean, and, and, and just find yourself. Find yourself a genre of Christian gospel music that you can bounce to. Everybody ain't going to bounce to Israel. Everybody ain't going to bounce to um, Fred Hammond. You might need Todd Tribbett. You may need Deidre. You know, I like Deidre. You know, everybody, everybody but, but find you something that is going to, go, going to charge your battery. Something that is going to keep you at the tap. You know, when we originally came up with this, some of y'all too young for this. I'm sorry, y'all ain't never get to go to Pizza Hut or Buffet. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but you would have free refills, right? Yeah. And when your cup got empty, you would get up and you would go to the tap. And you would fill your cup up as many times as you wanted. Sometimes we were out of control with it. Go back to the story about Pepsi. Oh, we got free refills. I'm gonna drink all the Pepsi I can because I know my stepdad ain't gonna give me none when I get home. Right. So I'm gonna drink it all here. But the reality is we understood that I could always go back to the tap and get filled up. Don't you understand that you can always go back to the anointing place and get filled up from God? All you gotta do is get up, take your cup, by the way, you're the cup, <laughs> and begin to pray and begin Man. to worship. It's very like and sometimes my wife will tell you, I'll be playing. I just start singing a song, silly, just She's playing. Just Next thing I know, I'll be like, whew. Okay, Holy Spirit. He's like, don't play with me. And then he'll I'll stop. Like, no, 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 what are you stopping for? Yeah, you know, Holy Spirit be like, don't play with me. I will fill you up right here. Yes. You talking about me. And I'm living up here. Like, honestly, get this. If the Spirit of God lives in you, 
if you're in your house, if you're laying in your bed, there may be a lot of noise going on in the out in the atmosphere that doesn't bother you. But when someone calls your name, what happens even when you're sleeping? Ooh, so so what happens? What do you think the Holy Spirit does when He's inside of you and Wait, you start talking about Him? He wakes up. He's like, "Oh, you talking to me? You, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just explaining to you. Go ahead. You don't believe me? You go ahead and try it. Go, go mess around in your house and start telling me. I think of the goodness of Jesus. Just mess around. Give it about two rounds. You know, Jesus, my hand start. Why my foot tapping? <laughs> and next thing you know, you'll be on your way. Be, be, but 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 what you're doing is you're giving back to the anointing. Yes. You're inviting. You're waking up. You're stirring up the spirit inside of you. That's what prayer does. It stirs up the spirit inside of you. That's what worship does. It stirs up the spirit inside of you. It puts you back at the tap. What's another way we can get back to the tap? And another way we can get back to the tap is seek Him in His Word. Psalm one nineteen sixteen through eighteen. And this, is, again, is in the English Standard Version. I will delight in your statues. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Y'all should know this one right here, verse 18. Open my eyes that I may behold the wondrous things out of your law. Amen, amen. That's Psalm 119, 16 through 18. Sometimes we just have to refer back to the manual as well. Right? You just gotta with that guy. Pull it up, pull it out. There have been times that I've um I think I've shared a picture of this. My <coughs> bookshelf in my office. There's one that's just filled with journals. Some are blank and I don't need to buy anymore, so hold me accountable. But there are some that are filled and what I do is I'll, you know, take one and usually they're a lot like some dream that I, you know that I've had and I'll take them back out and I'll just read them over and what that does is that encourages me and inspires me referring back to the manual to things that God spoke to me that's why we must seek him in his word not just not just one time but continually so sometimes if, if you're if you need to get back to the tap pull out that word whatever that one scripture is that you always always know this is my go-to this is the scripture that i know that no matter what i can always hold on to amen amen, amen. and the word of god is how you combat those ungodly beliefs like for everything that the enemy tries every seed that the enemy tries to sow into your life that is an ungodly belief about yourself the word of god has something that is true, a truth to combat that about you you're more than a conqueror. You can do all things. That's when those scriptures come into play. You can do all things. I will supply all your needs. Yes. None that the Father has given me have I lost. I'll never leave you or forsake you. The word has something in there, a sword, an arrow, a bullet to combat any ungodly belief the enemy tries to kill you with or attack you with. But you won't know it if you don't get back to the anointed place by reading and studying. <coughs> and the, the last one, seek him in service. How's your serve? Romans 12, 1. Yes, Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God which is your spiritual service of worship. I know you had um, wanted to dig into this one a little bit because you hijacked my slide earlier. <laughs> yeah, I, I also added um, Psalms 51 verses 2 through 12. Oh, I'm sorry, 10 through 12. Psalm 51, 10 through 12 reads, Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew me right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And the reason why I, or the reason why God led me to that is because a lot of times in our serve, our heart 
or our agenda or our motive is exposed. And a dysfunctional heart, a dysfunctional heart, a heart with a hidden agenda in service, it's got to be eliminated when serving the Father. Because everybody that cries, Lord, 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 is not going to make it into the kingdom of God. There are people who are in the church for all the wrong reasons. They're not there for Jesus. They're not there for God. They may be there for power. They may be there for prestige. Shoot, they might be there because they got to do work study. Oh, no. <laughs> but but I, 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 I said what I said. They, 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 they may be there because it has become a hiding space for them. It, it, it may be there, they may be there because, you know, they're religious and they believe that, you know, the religion is what is going to save them, but they're not there for the relationship. But a lot of times that stuff comes out in this service. My mom, maybe she is watching me, she can be a My mom taught me when I was young. I was fussing. I had attitude. I was washing the dishes. I was like, ah! <laughs> I was not so bad. Everybody dirty the dishes. I didn't dirty no dishes. I had to wash all the dishes. It was my day to wash. I was like, ah! I was just like, dirty dishes. I didn't know. I didn't want to go outside and play basketball. I was like, I don't want to watch these dishes. Y'all ate all this food. My mom was like, everything you do, son, do it as unto the Lord. She made me mad when she said that. It just, just killed my whole complaint. Just killed my whole. I was like, but. At that moment, she fixed my heart in service. So even when I didn't want to do something, I said, God, this is unto you. Doing it is unto you. And, 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 and when, when it's time to study and I'm tired, I'm like, I'm tired. I had a long day. I don't feel like it. But I know that I have to serve. I'm serving you, so I do it as unto you. This is not a, this is not a cultish type of thing. This is a, this is a heart thing. Because if you can't do it unto the Lord, don't do it. Amen. That's good. If you can't, I know, right? Y'all wasn't expecting yes. that. Y'all wasn't expecting <laughs> that. Y'all wasn't expecting that. Like, that was like a, a, a opening kickoff or a touchdown type of, oh, that was going to happen. If you can't do it unto the Lord, don't do it. You, you wasted your effort. You wasted whatever you do. And God sees through all that. Right. Amen. Like, God would, oh, I'm going to say it. God would rather you do a mediocre job with a pure heart mm -hmm. than do it perfectly with bad intentions. Amen. Your heart matters. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people get trained in serving God because they're serving Him for the wrong reason. When we did outreach this weekend, it was tough because we didn't have everybody who always had it was a lot of extra work and but you know what and, and and even but knowing that going forward but guess what when we finally finished when we got everything put away it felt good because our heart was in the right place and God honors a sincere heart yes. so even though oh I love it Holy Spirit even though we were physically drained our spirits overflowed you got that. Even though, you know, we needed a nap right. and something good to eat, yes. spiritually it was well with our souls because we had got back, we had got back to the tap, the anointing place, the reason why we were set aside, the reason why we were consecrated, the reason why we were separated. We weren't separated to just to just do it for show. Well, it's third Saturday. We have to know we're gonna serve the community and be lights in darkness to be beacons of hope. That's why we're here. So that when someone comes by with a video camera and he starts up a conversation and we start talking about what God is doing and how God is, and he gets excited. Yes. He's, he's, he's putting together content for himself and he don't know how to act. That's why we're here. Amen. That's what connecting to and getting back to the tap is all about. So getting back to the tap, we got to maintain and continue to pray and continue to worship, continue to serve, and continue to seek him in his Word. When I think about what happens when we get back to the tap, when we get back to the anointed place, I think about the prodigal son. Like the prodigal son grew up in a good home, if you know the story about the prodigal son, but he went away from his place. He, his dad had money, his dad was prosperous, but he desired other things. And where he went, he took his gifts, he took his resources with him, and eventually he found himself broken, poor. Rolling with the swine. We know the story, but what I like is when he got back home with his father, everything was okay. He went back home to be a servant. His dad was like, no, you're a son. 
It's amazing because even when he took his inheritance and went into the world, he never stopped being his son. And his father never stopped being. He was always a son, even though he was out of place, even though he was out of position. Right. He was always a son. We are always God's children, even when we are acting or move away from that protective place of purpose. But when he returned to the father, everything was good. They threw a party for him. He got a ring. He got a, he, he, he got dressed. He got a ring. And I know we, 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 we so carnal. The ring was a symbolic of him being back home. He was back in his proper place. And that's what God wants us to do when we desire to turn back to the father and get back to the tap. And even though, watch this, even though David was covered, right, during that season that Saul persecuted him, you got to remember that David was anointed to be king. So even though it took a while for David to get the throne completely for all of Judah, what he was anointed for, when he finally got on the throne, that's when he accomplished what God had anointed for him in the first time. He anointed him and then David was on the run. He anointed him, but David was persecuted. He anointed him, but that didn't stop Saul from trying to kill him. That didn't stop David from having to live amongst the Philistines for a season. But when he finally got back to the anointing place, the place that he was consecrated and called to lead, he was a phenomenal king. We have to likewise get back to the tab. Exodus 30, verse 25 and 25. We'll go there. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. I'm going to give um, Sister Plum the recipe so she can make this oil for us because she likes stuff like that. And then we're going to have, we're going to actually have an oil, we're going to have an anointing oil service. We're going to give everybody some anointing oil after the recipe in the Bible to pray for their families. I got the recipe right here. I'm not going to do today. I skipped that part. It's above this part, actually. It's before Exodus 30, chapter 2, oh, verse 25. But, um, and thou shalt, verse 26, and thou shalt anoint the tabernacle, right, of the congregation therewith. And this is the part I wanted to pull out. And the ark of the testimony, right? So they anointed the ark of the testimony. They anointed some other stuff, too. I want y'all to understand, though, these were inanimate objects that they were anointing. Again, I said that at the beginning. But they were anointed with purpose. They were consecrated for a legitimate reason. See, and so that's why when you hear the story about David, and when David sees the ark returning to Jerusalem, David begins to dance, and David begins to worship, and David begins to praise God in an exuberant way because he understands he understands what it means when something that is anointed returns yes. back to its place of purpose because he was anointed, right? But when he returned to his place of purpose, then he was able to do um, exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that he even thought that he was capable of because he was anointed and he was set aside and then he was put back in place. So now he sees the ark that was out of position, right. returning back to position, but it wasn't a per person, it was a thing, but it was an anointed thing. It was a consecrated thing. It was was a thing set aside and purpose to be a symbol of God's power, to be a symbol of God's hope, to be a symbol of God's presence, and it was returning back to its place of purpose. Yes. David knew the difference it made for something that is anointed to be in place. You got to understand that you're anointed. And there's something special about you being at the anointed place. You are a vessel, but you have to stay connected to the tap. When you get tired of being tired, you got to get on your knees and go back to the tap. When you get frustrated because you're facing obstacles that seem unsolvable, turn your plate down. Mm. and get back to the tap. <clears throat> when you have mentally run out of options and want to throw in the towel, open your Bible and get back to the tap. When serving God becomes a burden, check your heart. 
check your heart. Make sure your motive is not self-serving while you're serving. That's how you get back to the tent. And if it's necessary, put your pride to the side. Repent, ask the Father to forgive you. So you can get back in proper relationship with him. And get back to the anointed place. We're anointed for a reason. We're anointed for a reason. And when you return to that reason, return to that reason, you're going to receive your refreshment. Return to that reason, and you will get your second wind. You will mount up on wings like eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. But the first thing you got to do is get back to the tab. I pray that y'all are blessed.